Was that you that initiated that whole activity up there, cutting down trees, and did you get permits for that? Yeah, that's true, I never saw it. Looks like the fire department has cleared out the rest. I sent Al letters to get that cleared no, out. I just figured where the tree used to be. Okay. So, there, so there was sign. And I went out to look and I looked up there and I was like, oh, there's a tree. There were full walnut panties removed. And I believe that there are permits needed for that. Is your question if they author, if that was them? Or I, asked, I asked initially if they initiated that activity. And the second question is, did you get permits for that? Did you initiate that tree cutting? Okay. This is recently. About two weeks ago. Yeah. There's, we have an arborist that's going to come out. Count. Yeah, there's a lot taken down. There's nothing to look at anymore. That's the question. There was a recent tree cut. Did you authorize it? Or did someone else? That's the question. We did not do it. That's the question. And you don't know who, I mean, I don't think you would know who authorized it. It wasn't you, right? And your second part of the question is? Well, we don't own the land right now. So it's irrelevant if it wasn't them. Yeah, we're, do we have to be escrowed to buy the land? We don't own the land. So we don't, you know, we're not paying property taxes. But, but there are requirements for brush removal and stuff like that. These are full big trees. My other question is, you're here looking for support for your project. You want to get support from the neighborhood council, which means that you're trying to get our support. Not at this meeting, no. No, but that's your goal. In general, correct. And so, but you're, you don't have very many answers to our questions. So how do you think that's going to work? Well, what's your question? Well, all of our questions. A lot, a lot of the answers we're getting are goal. We don't really know specifically answer that question. And we don't know that yet. And so how can we make a decision on whether or not, why don't we support this? Well, well, okay. So we're not asking you to make a decision tonight. This is an outreach meeting. We're trying to listen. We've answered a lot of questions tonight. We've answered in every previous meeting to the best of our ability. And when suggestions are made, sometimes we've had constructive suggestions and we take them to heart, like this driveway change, okay? Like the park matter, like the three story to two story. So we have listened and we have, you know, made changes to try to address questions and concerns, you know, and to, you know, do our best to improve, you know, the plan. I'm sorry. And when they are going to be seeking support from us, it'll be agendized and the exact wording from what they're seeking. We don't even have that yet. So we did just, we kept this meeting as an outreach for them just to answer more general questions than specifically what they're asking as far as support wise from the neighborhood council. Thank you. Melissa? I have a question about the Sierra Club and the Sierra Club Association. Yes. Is there any reason why you wouldn't have included them in your application? Well, I'm not sure what the reason is. I'm sure it would be in the application. Okay. Well, I don't think that's the reason. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
there's an opportunity to put up a sign for the overall El Camino community. Oh, not I heard you say it. Naming it. No, I, well, I, 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 I just probably didn't to, communicate very well. I heard you say that you had to yeah. name we don't have, yeah. I said, yeah. We don't have a name <laughs> for the community, but there's an opportunity here. We don't have to. There's no rule to have a sign. But there's just an opportunity. You know? And so if people want to say something like, welcome to El Suino, or something like that, I mean, sure. it's just possible, okay. is all. So yeah. that kind of goes along with another concern I have, just about the developer's sense of the community and respect for those that live around where you might be building. Um, and that that is part of a conversation that I had with Mr. Um, Pardo, I think, earlier last week when you were doing outreach. You and I met on Lombardi Boulevard. And you told me that the price range for the homes were likely to be 585 to 600,000. That's where it would start. Is that or, that's or, right? or market rate? We have to, um, yeah, whatever the market rate is. And right. those are the prices that we're looking at because this is a project that's going to get done in a couple of years. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be three years before homes sure. are sold. That's, uh, and I understand it's not really clear. The actual rate is not clear. But my concern wasn't so much about the price that you named, but it was about what. What you told me to help me think that that was a great thing. What you told me when we were standing there was the homes would start at six hundred thousand to bring the right kind of people into the community. Uh oh. And I don't. I can't afford that, and that's what I told you. I can't afford that, so I don't think I belong in El Serena. But I'm concerned about that kind of attitude coming into into our community, asking for this for this much of a land grab, and then walking away. That makes me feel really. Well, one of the things that I wanted to clear up with you was that. We have heard comments, I have heard comments from um, other neighbors asking whether this was Section 8, mm -hmm. and I answered a direct question, no, it's not Section 8. It's not um, affordable housing, it's market rate housing. And that's what it is. I, I'd be lying with that totally Thank you. Um, next question, Tom, next to Yeah. 
Yeah, we don't know if we're going to get approved. We can go through this whole process and not get approved, and not get approved for the 43. Now, by right, I think you can do 35 without, you know, a zone change. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, we're going to move so, on to the next question. <laughs> Sir, do you have a question? Matt? I did. Um, you, you made the comment about... Um, we have a lot of people. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the schools being at capacity. How is that determined? Oh, um, that, that have, I'm sorry, that they have the capacity as more people are coming in. Yeah, I just, I asked the principal, this Dr. Francis Gibson is the principal of middle school, and this is um, Teresita De Palma is the principal of the elementary school, and they are, they just told me that they are below capacity. So the schools are not impacted. So the charter school is the way it was yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, which we have, again, nothing yeah, to do with. Yeah. We're out there like, okay, well, what, because I met with them. What, what concerns might you have? How can we help you and support you? And so, in, in just sort of talking, I just asked that question. And I said, no, we, we have capacity. We would love to have more kids in the school. So, um, they didn't give me any numbers. And um, I, don't, I don't have any. In fact, they just told me that. We have plenty of capacity. So if you have 43 homes, I mean, it's, on the one hand, it sounds like a big project, but on the other, it's pretty small from the standpoint of how many kids could actually go and, and, and such. Okay. And one more question. I, okay. I came here late. <laughs> who is the actual owner? What is the name of the company? I don't know. The name of the company. Oh, I don't know the name. Their owners are theirs. Yeah, the, who, who is buying the, the actual lot? Oh, it's we're Clearwater Communities. I was wondering, uh, so in order to put the houses at the top of the hill, you have to crown the hill, is that right? You're going to cut the top off the hill in order to make the flat space to put those houses? Well, the top of the hill was cut up decades and decades ago. It's flat. You can drive up to it. And there was some sort of uh, an apartment building up there previously that's been knocked down. <laughs> Rat house or multi-residential. Yeah. So it's already what you just described. It's already crowned. Correct. Yeah, it's flat. You, you can drive up there, get a whole bunch of cars up there today. I've driven up there many times. So it's already been it's it's not like it's some pristine hill. Those sites have been built. Not enough for those houses. Well, no, they're yeah. going to come down a certain level. Well, right. well that's what we're working out is what the, what the level of that based on the slope of the driveway is a 15%. How the houses get built. All of that being valuable. Excuse me. The gentleman's question was just are you going to cut the top off? And I was like, well, no, it's already flat. It's been cut up a long time ago. And it has structures and cars and stuff like that. So you're not planning to go the top of the hill. What was the second part? What was your second part? There is a second part. The second part is, uh, I, I'm, I'm clear. Uh, do I understand you're saying uh, 6,000 square feet per house, which is typical in the El Sereno area, is insufficient for you to uh, launch your project, uh, is or is it? I, I, I'm unclear why, because it's a lot of extra work to get a variance, and, and I would have thought to put those number of houses in the pads, you're going to have to put the houses very close together. It's going to change the price you can sell because you're jamming houses together. So since 6,000 square feet <laughs> Okay, it's very typical in El Sereno. Uh, what is the objection that you feel that you just can't live with 6,000 square feet per house? Note, noting that you are getting special permission anyway to uh, uh, rework the hillsides so that, uh, so that the apparently the community area is how you, <coughs> how you pull it all together. Okay, um, just trying to understand. So you're talking about lots, not houses, right? So well, I'm lot. talking about, I, I checked the area. I didn't get the whole area this morning, but I saw 210,000 square feet. So. Oh, for the whole site? Yeah, so, yeah, so it's a little acres. more than that, but basically it's in those numbers. So when you say you can do 35 houses at 6,000 square feet, uh, that's a credible thing. The question is, why is that not a, 
why is it not adequate since it's uh, typical for the community? Okay, okay. So, so what you're saying is, by right, if, if by right and you do the math, you can get six thousand. You can get thirty-five, six thousand square foot. Minimum yeah, that's how you're claiming thirty-five houses. Is that right? Well, yeah. The way by right. Yeah, you, you, you take the acres, turn it into square feet. Yeah. And then because RD6, minimum 6,000, you divide the 6,000 into the larger number, and then that equals 35. So that, that, that's how that calculation is. So, um, now, uh, that, so, uh, so, so, so that, that, that's one thing. So what we're doing is not a variance. What we're going to be seeking is a zone change from this RD6 and a portion of this R1. And the RD6 has a minimum of 6,000, R1, minimum 5,000 square foot lot. Yeah. So you have one consistent zoning, and that's RD5, that's a minimum 5,000 foot lot. And yeah. then if you take the same total number of acreage and divide by 5,000, that's when you go to 43. So the ask, if you will, is, go, is the eight homes going from 35 to 40. <coughs> and so that, that, that's what it is. We originally, by the way, started and, and, and had thoughts in the and, an idea of getting 53 homes on the site. But that would require a general plan amendment and a much more significant zone change. And when we looked at everything, we decided not to do it. We were advised not to do it. So we scaled back the program from 53 to 43. And if that's a significant you know, change in our financial pro forma. But we can make it work at 43, we think. But, you know. But 6,000 is typical for the area, if I understand correctly. Well, that I don't know. I don't know what the typical lot size. I know in City of LA for R1, there's, there's a lot. I mean, that's 5,000 minimum. So some are 5,000. And then they range, you know, you know much larger, too. So right. typically the minimum is five thousand. We gotta get to the other question. And I apologize, but yeah, they've gone over that on a couple of meetings. So maybe if you want to speak to him after. Okay. If you need more clarification, sir. Okay. Um, I guess I have three three questions. Um, the first has to do with, with density of the of the existing community, the immediate community. Have you compared you know that to what what you're proposing? You know, there's oh, the, the density? Um, yes. Yeah. You know, you know it's a, it, that's an interesting question, and I don't, I don't precisely know what particular density is, but when we look at this little, this is just a Google Earth photo, and, and, and we look all around at all, all these houses here, you know, there's there's no open space. It's just everything's divided into... There is open property. space. The, the lot that you're building on is open space. <laughs> So, I mean, you I'm, I'm, done a comparison on so the we don't have you know, a comparison. The, the density here, if you look at it, it's about, it's just the map, it's about 8.75 to the acre. Right, and, and obviously it's it's a hillside, so some of that acreage is not buildable. Is that correct? Yeah, as a matter of fact, right. a lot of air is all yeah. over. Now, um, a lot of us have, I mean, or let me, let me say, I... I um, my, oh, one of my concerns is, is um, you know, open space, we, we value that, I, I would say, as a, as, as a community. And um, when, I, when I see six stacked units and I drive by and I can't see through there, I'm concerned about that. I'm, you know, along, along Lombardi there. If I see six units there, I see no open space. We would like to see open space between those units. At least that, if you're going to build it. And just take that into consideration as an example of when you build, that we want to see open space. We don't want to see six stacked units when we drive by Lombardi because, because um, you know, you want 43. Um, we would like to see space between there so that I can see my hillside that I've grown up, my children have grown up and seen, that I feel you're taking part of that away. But if you can leave some of that for us to see, then we're going to work with, with you as opposed to work against you um, 
if you're able to, to take those types of things into consideration. And the other concern I have, that's the end of that. The next, the next concern I have is the exit and the safety of that exit for the people who pull out of there. Um, do, you, do you know the average speed of, of, um, on, on Eastern there? Not the posted speed, but the average speed. It's really quick. You don't, I don't think you live in this community and you know that, but let me tell you, it's really quick and it's a blind corner. So if you're proposing to put an exit there, please put a, put a, a signal. Please put a signal there. There's room for it. There's a park across the street. How, 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 how do you expect children to go to school that you're talking about right across the street? Well, is that a question? For you, yes. Okay. Well, there's a uh, light intersection of Lombardi. Right. We we all know that. And there's a and, and there's and there's a, a crosswalk there. Right. And, and 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 do you think that the kids over that on the south end of your property want to walk down to that corner and cross? Don't you think it would be better to have a signal where your exit is and have a crosswalk there well, to get to the park and get to the school? Um, we would like that. I, I would like that. Maybe talking about that first yeah. exit. Yeah. The only exit. Yeah, there's only yeah. one exit. Yeah. Right. There's only one exit. Determination of traffic signals come from Department of Transportation in the city. So they do their analysis on trip counts and um, and all sort of stuff, and then they would impose that. We're asking you. We're asking you to put it in. We're asking you to come up with the idea to put it in. Now that's just a seed. It's up to you to make the decision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, wait. Oh. Is, I have three. Okay, that's um, um, wait. Okay. So, 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 so one, one was um, um, the density, the view, and the exit. Please deal with those. Please. Thank you. Now, one quick. Wait, I'm here, and then I think I'm waiting for my turn. Yes. And what I'm trying to say is. We are against the first project and we are against this one. This last thing. You are living in our area. We are living in this area. We try to protect our area. Our area where we live. Where we grown up. What's the same question? It's not a question. This is my point of view. What I'm seeing, you're trying to build how many houses in that little tiny spot? You already take over all the town buildings? And how many people and how many cry come with those buildings? <coughs> it's unsafe away for the kids. We are parents that have to work. What, what safety are you talking about? The traffic. Traffic? Traffic is the main thing that you have to think. But of course, you're not part of this community. You don't know. You don't see. Probably when you come and see 12 cars, you see, oh, they have enough. No. No, sir. <coughs> Wait. We have our kids working by themselves. Why? Because our schedules. You know how many times we've almost been killed by drivers? Or kids have been killed by drivers? You don't. You don't know. Our kids are unsafe if you try to build those. Because you know what? Two storage houses is the worst. Three stories one is unbelievable. It's no more safe. It's a school, it's a park, it's our houses. We have a one neighbor built in a house and it's already a huge you can see it's not finished yet, but it's gonna be invasion of privacy. I have to interrupt at this point because we're at 7.30 and we've already extended, so I really uh, 
We have a committee member who will go ahead and make another motion. The motion to send to the 745 committee, 745. Just one more quick question. Yes. So, <laughs> we make a motion to extend the meeting for 15 minutes and she seconding and we'll go ahead and vote and I think we're all in favor. Aye. Aye. Good. And that's it. Uh, but that's it. So the motion is approved to extend the meeting for 15 minutes. Um, did you have a question? Or was it a concern? It might be concerned. And it'll be noted on, on our minutes? Yes. Yes. And it's yes. recorded, but do you have a question or is that concern you want to No, it does. It does. I believe we have all, you guys have the power to build whatever you want, but it's for our community and safe since the first time. And how many of those houses that you try to build? No, it's too many houses, too many. Thank you. Yeah, it's again the, but the again the point of view of the traffic. I'm sorry, but in the morning when you come, the bus stop there is only making one line. If you go now, the morning you know the car wash in Lombardi is using that side. If you go now to see the taco man, he's using the whole street. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big street that one. It's not I, especially that one. You want the, the, the people that live in the Rapa Street, they have hard time to get out of there. Wow. Try, try to see that because it's a pure, it's a blind spot. Look at how we see, and you, and let you, you have to do, you have to think about it, that because it's not really okay. drive again, drive in the morning when you come from, come to the drive to this direction, and try to make sure, and they go now with the taco guy, and go in the morning when the car watch is there, and you, they use the, the whole, it's a little small screen of body. So, think about it, go, go, feel more time, don't go a minute of the day. Uh, yeah, well, the one that you were talking about doing was yeah. irrigating and planting so the taco guy doesn't... <laughs> 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 But we know and everybody knows that they don't only have two cars. And unfortunately, people who use that garage, as I do, the neighbors are the ones who are going to park in front of the house. So now there are 43 more houses. So are they going to be parking in front of our houses too? You know, I, it, 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 each house has two parking spots. There's several areas on the site. Where I understand that. I know houses, they have three and garages, so, and they, you, they have at least four cars. Well, you know, one thing that's great about America is that families can buy as many cars as they want. <laughs> and, you know, we're not, we, we don't control what, how many cars people have. but. Just you think about from a common sense standpoint, mm -hmm. this this road, I mean, coming up here is, is pretty long to get up there, and you know it's going to go up at an incline of 15 percent. I don't think it's hold on. I don't think it's likely that people who live, you know, up there are going to park, you know, down on the street. And and I'll say something else. One of the things is along Eastern and along our side here. Um, we want that to have to be basically, you know, just for a safety standpoint, a no parking, you know, area, so that it is, you know, the most visible for people trying to cross. And in talking to people at the city, nobody wants any crossing, you know, there be people running across. It's all red. It's all the reasonable thing, red. Yeah. So the crosswalk is where people are supposed to cross, but you know we all know people. You know people do what they do. I mean, I don't know. If you probably took a poll, and everybody wanted to be honest in this room. I bet you a lot of people speed. You know, and I bet you a lot of people jaywalk. I mean, it's just this is kind of human nature things. I mean, we we're really just a home builder. We, we don't control populations and traffic and 
you know, things of that sort. And quite frankly, the, kind, the, the volume of cars that's, that's generated by single family homes is relatively low as, say, compared to a school. Like the school proposition or proposal had some 13, over 1,300 trips per day. We, th this community, when fully built out, would be, you know, of just a, a small fraction of that. And I don't know precisely how many, but maybe like what, 20% of that, or yeah, about well, 20%. <coughs> maybe maybe 20% of it. I mean, single family homes just don't create that much traffic. There's not nothing, but it just doesn't create that much. And whether this gets built or not. You have a blind intersection. You've got people driving and speeding, doing whatever they are there. You have people stacked up. Adding this quantity of houses is not going to make or break anything. It, it is it in a traffic situation. It will make it worse. We'll it, that's for sure. Right. Okay. Um, she wanted me to relay that. She believes it's too many houses. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have <laughs> on the record. I just have one question. I'm concerned with one access and one exit. Uh, Safety-wise for emergency response, you know, I'd love to see what the fire department's input is for having one. Or maybe downsize a little bit more on the houses on Lombardi and make that an exit. Uh, but I, I just, I'm concerned with that, with having... <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, we did, have, we did have more, and we drank it from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me tell you this, that anything we do goes, amongst other things, to the fire. And it, it's, it's something that they, they look at, and they need to make sure that they can get in and out, that they can turn the emergency vehicles around, and that it is completely safe. Further, we also go through sanitation, okay? Because we want the trash to be picked up by the mechanical arm trucks in front of every house, and so that that doesn't end up being like a big mess. So the, all the safety and access things go through a scrutiny by, by those. And, and so there are the exit on Lombardi and then the one here. Like I said, we had two before, but you know, people, you know, made a lot of commentary that this is not safe, and so we listened to that commentary. So, you know, I you just can have to that two driveways, one driveway. What if that entrance is blocked? Let's just say there's an accident, and the fire department can't access an emergency call. So it's just the one entrance, one exit, that's the only concern I have. If that is blocked, what's the alternative? No, just a thought. I know for the sake of time, just to Thank you, Angela. And, um, okay. Um, no, you did? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, go ahead. It was excellent. Uh, comment. I live on a circle. Two-thirds two of the garages are storage. They don't park their cars in the garage. One family has four cars. Part of the circle. One side of the circle, no parking. So I understand parking problems. My question is, with the economy the way it is, with Alhambra having two blocks of condos being built right now, what is the price range approximate for the houses that you're going to build? What are they going to sell for? You mean if they were built today? Yes. They existed today. They probably sell in the five hundreds, but I, I don't know exactly. I mean, you know, what are our brokers? How do you have to put it out there in the market? It really tells you. Well, you, from, from the experience of Monterey Road and Avenue sixty, when they started building those homes, that were going to be about two hundred and fifty, and they ended up up six six hundred thousand. They were never going to be two fifty now. It costs more than two fifty a lot. No, no, this is about a few years back. Originally, that that was a, that was the rumor that they were going to be. I, I believe they've asked. I'm just saying the yeah. cost the cost was more they, than they've that. They've always said it's based on the cost, right, at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they're thinking. Is yeah. It, I don't know. I believe they're going to six hundred. So. For me. Now we're. Let's talk. So what? So what's the price of this? And where do you expect these people to come from? But the economy the way it is. Are you guys a person? What's the price range and where? Where are they going to buy a stuff? Where is that one?
Okay. Um, go ahead, ask a question. Okay, a uh, quick, quick comment, just a quick of being here, but it came today. If you guys came in late, I, I taped the meeting from the beginning, um, so if you want to view it, it'll be on the FA2 website, and it's using the FA2.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm going to send it to you guys also, because there's a demo at 90032.org. And so in case you guys came in late, I did film the whole video of the whole meeting. And it'll be on YouTube, and I'll send the links to Jurisdano, 90032.org, and L32.org, the NC website. Um, the only question I have is the entrance, like, like um, Anita mentioned, is, is it's only one entrance. Does that entrance wide enough to fit two cars, one, one entrance and, and, and one entry, or is that just one at a time? Because it's just kind of small. Two way traffic. Two way traffic. Two way traffic. Okay. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry, before you, because I did get some email questions. I don't know if these people are here, but if you could just answer them quickly. I'm not going to ask you anything that's been covered, but there are a couple of important questions on here. And this one, um, it says, why is the city considering this proposal since it violates the Hilltop Development Ordinance? But they're not considering it yet, right? Because you haven't submitted it to the city? Thank you. 
and I really request that the committee consider alternatives for our community for this parcel, but I do not support this development. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we, need, we need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Thank you guys for coming. Uh,